NSW, what is one thing you hope your parents never find out about you? Being the undercover disaster child that I am, I have no idea which one thing to post. So, here are some of my prime parent crushing moments in life. One when I came home at 6am very tired, it wasn't because I stayed up all night at Jacob's and went to church the next morning, I was actually coming home from a rave. I met a 20 something year old goth lady on the internet and she gave me a fake kid, a metric crap ton of e, booze, took me downtown and we had a blast. 15 was a weird year for me, too I got so crap faced on a work day in the army, I took a stripper home. Realized I was blacking out 45 minutes before PT. She gave me some M and it saved my butt from certain doom. 3 that cop wasn't taking me home because of the curfew. What really happened is I was crap faced feeding some horses on my walk home. I knew the cop pretty well and in his words. I drove by and saw a drunk kid abusing some horses. You were just laughing at them and feeding them. So I figured no harm no foul. The rest die with me. Whoa. Am I really that freaky? Thanks guys. I got back from bumfrick nowhere. I gotta pack my bags because I start a hitchhiking adventure tomorrow and then I'll get back to you. More stories. I'll bite. 4. Quick note. My dad is a very ridiculous man. When I turned 13, all I wanted was a BB gun. My dad being a good sport and crazy got me one. Months later an old shopping mall had closed down so at least once a week we'd go out around 3am and he'd let me shoot out store windows. This went on for a while and eventually the police department installed a security camera to find out who was doing it. Homeless guy stole the camera. I know this because at the time my dad was an officer. Turns out one business hadn't officially left yet so I ended up shooting a jewelry store. We rode off never to shoot again. 5. This one. I'm not proud of. I had a party at my place. A lot of people had come and there was a lot of drinking. At one point, a group of 8 of us decide to go to the strip club. My roommate said he'd stay for the party. We go out, pay the 30 bucks for this crap type BYOB club. We sit down and there are only 2 strippers that were hideous. We realized this was like an end of the line club for strippers so we asked for our money back almost instantly and were denied. We were so drunk at the time that we single file walked into the bathroom and destroyed everything. Last thing I saw was my buddy drop kick the toilet into the wall. Single file walked out and scattered. Eventually, I get home to my place filled with all new people and my roommate explaining to me everyone left and he went to bed. Woke up to like 30 people walking in and partying. Said whatever and made some new friends. Sorry if those weren't cool. She gave me some M and it saved my butt from certain doom. Don't trust me research. I love this sentence. That I don't particularly like them. Or the rest of my family for that matter. My dad is dead. I have three younger brothers. Mom is remarried to a cool enough guy. And I have three older stepsisters. Every few years I'll go back and visit. Not because miss any of them but because my mother, my brothers, and my girlfriend will pester me about visiting. I'll call every few months because the girlfriend will pester me about calling my mom. My girlfriend is very close to her family. Plus, I suppose you're supposed to stay connected with your mom and family. I don't dislike like them but I'm no more fond of them than any other acquaintances. I don't really enjoy my time with them. When I visit New Hampshire I try to fill my time doing all the tourist why things I never did when I lived there so that I'm too busy to spend it with family. Or catching up with the one friend I have there that I still give a dang about. Who wants their mother to find out her firstborn is relatively indifferent to her. Tomorrow is Sunday. I'll call mom. More worried about my grandparents finding out that I've abandoned religion. It would crush them. My parents not so much. This for my mom and maternal grandparents. I think my mom believes I'm just non-practicing but she doesn't really assert herself much. She is rather passively insistent I get married in the church though. For the last 10 years I've pretended to be a germaphobe. I'd act completely disgusted at almost everything. If someone touched my food I'd get new food. If they brought me home a drink the straw had to be left in the wrapper so I knew it hadn't been touched. I'd start gagging at every little thing they did to tease me as they realized more and more how much I hated it. I did this for 10 years just so I'd never have to wash the dishes. I know the second my mother finds out, every time I go over there I'll have to do the dishes for the rest of our lives. The long con. 
For the last two semesters I have told my family I have been attending classes at a local college. I failed my first three semesters and decided it was better to act like I was going than to spend more money. It's like my brain can't function anymore. I hear the words and try to do the work but I can't. I am ready to change things up. I am going to go Monday to my doctor and start the process of getting my mind back on track. Me and my mom are close not so much my dad, but I think I am going to wait to tell them until I see my doctor. You guys are great and I appreciate the help. Considering my private life, accused of debauchery, not guilty, was brought up in open court with them present. Not much else to hide from them. Just being accused of debauchery or physical shamming can ruin your life. You can start fresh of course. Hope you're okay bro. Probably not what you are looking for considering the NSW tag you put on it, but I hope they don't find me. For reasons listed below and much more. Dad running over our pet kittens that mom insisted needed to stay outside for the sake of her clean house. Then making me and my siblings clean up the dead kittens. Dropping off so many dogs. Which entailed going to a deserted part of town late at night. Leaving animals. They did it to a cat once too. That I loved and cared for there. And driving off. They would justify this by saying that we just couldn't afford them and that they would be happier and that new homes. Dad forcing little brother to take his prescription medication so that dad could use little brother's pee for a drug test because dad was also smoking pot at the time. Little brother had to take the prescription so that there were traces of it in the urine sample when they ran the test. The many times dad lost control and beat us. Abusing drugs inclusive but not limited to crack, C, oxycodone, Mary Jane, Percocet, Xanax, etc. Dad crashing the car because he fell asleep at the wheel while high on painkillers. After this my brother and I would walk to the store every day to get food for the youngest brother because my parents would either be high or having withdrawals. Mum blaming her children for the way her life turned out, often out loud and while she was fricked up. All the Christmases birthdays BBQS that ended up with us hiding in our rooms while they fought through things called the cops on each other. Taking all of their children out of the public school system. Registering us as homeschooled and then proceeding to not teach us anything make any effort for us to have outside the family social contact. My mom for calling me a W when I got interested in makeup. Mom for getting angry because I was getting my get and going to college because that was something that she never got the chance to do having children and sacrificing her life for the greater good. Both of them for attempting to gaslight these memories. When they both stopped going to work. Telling me to not make a big deal out of the physical shaming I endured through family friends when I open up to them about. Ridiculing me for my teeth, weight, hair, and anything else you could think a teenage girl would be self-conscious about. Telling me I would never amount to nothing. Throwing away all of our childhood pictures, toys, blankets, etc. Mom for leaving my dad and not taking my little brother with her. Dad for taking my little brother and fleeing the state. I haven't seen my little brother since. Years of manipulating me into paying the bills so they could continue their habits while I put my life goals on the back burner. All of this and more. Sorry it's so long. It transformed into a rant. All of this and they still have no clue why I want nothing to do with them. They were correct about one thing. You'll never amount to nothing. Whatever happens, you'll always be something. And as long as you keep on your current path, you'll be better than they ever were. Once my sister and I went to the beach and brought bananas to eat, we forgot about them, and when we got home, we just left the bag in her room. Well, a few weeks later, she came crying to me. The bag smelt like death and flies were swarming around. I opened the bag and there were hundreds of maggots everywhere. It was amazing that they didn't get out. At the bottom of the bag I found one thing, a blackened banana. My sister continues to tell me that the bag was expensive. In her panic, she came up with a great idea. The idea was to get the bag, walk to her school, and drop it in the dumpster by the building, and then tell our parents that we lost it so I ended up getting paid $50 to drag a maggoty bag to a dumpster at 3 in the morning. By the way, my parents ended up buying her a new bag and believed her story that it was stolen. That I'm subscribed to R.A. Saban Assists, read it religiously, and have posted about them there. My dad would be broken hearted, and my mother, the narc, would deny the heck out of it and play the victim. 
that I had to take the morning after pill when I was 15. Instead of telling my mum, I told my teacher, who got it with me, sat with me while I took it, and cried. Bought me a pregnancy test and was 100% prepared to take me to get an abortion if need be. She did this without telling my parents. I feel as if I have to state the following. The teacher was pastoral care, meaning she is trained to deal with these things. She would not get fired, nor arrested for doing this. This type of situation can be dealt with by teachers or an adult rather than the parents. In the UK, I live in the UK, you have to be 13 years old to be able to have an abortion take the morning after pill without your parents knowing. I was also with her at the time of getting the pill. She was there with me so I knew what was happening. She did not buy the pill for me. What I would like to clarify is that, the teacher did everything right, played by the rules and did tell the relevant people about what had happened. No misconduct, nothing illegal and I was not in any danger. In fact, I felt that was the safest way that the situation could have been resolved. I've left school now, it was one or two years back. I still keep in contact with her, but more as a friend than a teacher. She was like a mother to me in the two years I was at that school. I feel as if people did not know about this, and that teachers could be trusted on this level. If you do have any problems that you cannot tell your mum or dad, let a teacher know. They're trained and can probably point you in the right direction. I owe teachers a lot. What a freaking bro. That I found my mom's bag of corn cobs. Actually it appeared to be a single, power corn fob, with a half dozen or so attachments. This was in my parents bathroom above the light fixture. Next to it was a roll of 100s with 10,000 written in pen on the outside bill and a revolver next to that. I'm just waiting to repress this memory. That I was physically shamed by a family friend when I was little. This is the first time I've told a single person and it makes me sick at myself to even remember it. I guess we are in the same boat. Frankly, they are so invasive and controlling that there's not much left to tell. They've set so many internet safety things that they probably know my every physical kink and pee preference. My mom's dug through my room enough to find and take cigarettes and booze. Twice. Thankfully she didn't see or was smart enough to leave my condoms. They've probably figured out at this point that I'm not a Christian anymore. They subtly make it clear how disappointing I am often and I'm pretty sure they make me the example of how not to end up for my brothers. Jesus. I remember making a joke at 13 about cream soda looking like beer and my mom telling me to stop because I'm the one she worries about. Bit of a self-fulfilling prophecy maybe? They berate me for doing nothing but watching Netflix and playing video games. But I do plenty more than that. I meditate, exercise, read, and basically do anything to try to be a generally better person. And yet they always bug me for not spending enough time with them. I just don't share their interests. And honestly don't see myself getting homesick when I move out. That I'm in therapy because of them. They think it's for my PTSD. They just don't realize that they are one of the sources. That I've had fricked. My mom is very religious and kinda controlling. One time recently she tried to get me to bring my 17 year old sister as a chaperone on a date. She also tells me that I'm not allowed to be alone in a room with my boyfriend or see him after dark. Once she told me that I hug him too long and I should only hold hands. I'm 20, I still live with her, and I don't have the means to move out yet. She drives me crazy, but I have a lot of opportunities to sneak out and see my BF. So it's not too bad right now. Jesus Christ, I hope you moved out or are moving out soon. That I took a break from school. A long one. I have to fess up this next winter, because they are under the impression I should be graduating by the end of this year. I'm 22, and if you're in the same situation like me, your time is running out. I've been working corporate for a poorly ran computer company. The naive is strong with this one. The experience was slightly worth it, and has made me a more confident person socially. Stay in school kids. 23 and just starting my second semester. My time is far from running out. With luck I'll have another 70 years ahead of me. You should go to school when you're ready and have a clear career path in mind. Not because it's expected of you. One time I was home alone and broke a chair. I was rarely left home alone. 
and this time the stars aligned and I got to fly solo. I'm running around the house like a movie montage with walking on sunshine playing in the background. I slide over the arm of the new lounger chair and it caves in. We just got that freaking nice leather living room set and I broke the freaking arm. I went through that weird sense of calm instead of panic mode and I flipped the chair upside down. I had some time and decided to take the bottom fabric off the chair. I very carefully removed the staples with a butter knife or something. And yup. I broke this wooden particle board straight through. I tried using wood glue. Dumb I know. I was 11 or so. Give me a break. I figured the best thing to do was prop something in there. I find an extra hammer and jam it in there. It worked perfectly propping up the two broken pieces and fitting in the negative space. I found some carpet tacks and patched that crap right up. It was years before anyone realized anything happened. When I was 19 they moved houses and the chair came back from the movers with a fricked up sunken in arm. They said they even heard something banging around in there. They blamed it on the movers. Two things. One. How much I think about casual fricking and all the dirty ways I would like to frick a guy. This wouldn't be a massive thing but my parents are Indian and although they are pretty chill about almost a lot of things. I would struggle to explain why I would want to frick anyone for fun and although they would never s shame me. I feel that they would be disappointed and feel like their daughter is slipping away from them even though I just pick and choose the best from the country I'm from and the environment I was raised in. 2. How I thought and planned about committing suicide last year. My depression really fricked me up and I worry that when I go back to college it'll come back harder. 1. I've never actually had fricked casually. I just said it's what I think about a lot. I'm far too insecure about my non-existent love life so I'd really like to date before I even consider it. 2. My parents are not strict. They are pretty liberal and they won't s shame me if they knew I thought about this. In fact they would be sad because they know that a lot of Indians are never forgiving to a woman who loves to frick. 3. I already have gone to counseling for depression and will go back for college. I just recently got a tattoo. And I absolutely love it. My dad did the whole it's gonna be on your body forever thing almost every day before I got it. So even if, in 10 years or so, I do regret getting it, I'm not gonna tell him. I can't let him win this one. I hope they don't find out that I am unhappy with my life. That I've been given everything that I've ever wanted and for some reason I can't seem to enjoy anything that Jay do. The company of others. The simplicity of being alone. Food, drugs, relationships. Nothing makes me happy. My parents don't know I smoke weed just about every day. So I wouldn't want them finding that out. The thing that would be worse than that is if they found out I got my younger brother into smoking weed. He was arrested and got into a whole lot of trouble all because I didn't want to smoke alone one day. Your brother is a true bro not ratting you out. A lot of things. The few things that come to mind at the moment though. Drugs. Private life history. In particular the time I got laid against a portal while some guy took a pee next to me. Probably going part time dropping out of uni to pursue music. How much I don't like his partner. That I used to self harm. Made suicide plans, wrote a few letters, and almost went through with it once. 1. Mom thinks I get headaches because I play too many video games. It's because I don't eat a lot because I'm scared if I do she and my little sister won't have anything to eat. 2. I have extremely bad social anxiety around people. I just play it off like I know how to act around people. 3. I have anger problems to the point where I might hurt someone. My mom wonders why I get so mad at video games. I'm just scared guys. My parents are both professionals in their fields. My father is returning to school to get his doctorate. And we have a very nice quality of life. My parents want the same for me. But I just want to work on sport fishing boats. Make crap money. Live by the ocean. Maybe one day I'll become a captain of my own boat but until that day, it's tattoos, cigarettes, and crappy work until that happens. I was in the middle of planning my suicide by the second Saturday in May. I forgot my family and I were leaving that Friday night. I found Wednesday after all my things were clean and debts were paid. I was going to write my note that night and plan then tie up a few loose ends by the end of that week. I was ready, then my brother reminded me of the trip. I decided to not ruin my family's vacation, so I held on and went. 
The night I came back, I loaded my gun and sat down. I cried for an hour. I made an appointment to see a therapist. Only she knows it happened, but not the full story. It's been hard but I am learning to love the sunshine. I am planning a 4 day trip to NYC next weekend. I did not tell my family why. It is because I want to find something about myself and I can't do it here. I want to be happy again maybe this trip will do it. Two things. 1. The two failed suicide attempts. One trying to hang myself and another with a gun in the mouth. Pull the trigger and the gun didn't go off. Later that night a skunk was in the yard. Dad took that very gun and shot the skunk. To this day I am just in awe of how surreal that was. 2. The severe amount of whoring around I did around college. I come from a pretty religious family and they all have this image of me being a son. That I really don't like her. I love her. She's my mom. But I don't like her as a person and don't really wanna spend time with her. If that makes sense. If she wasn't my mom, I'd probably actively dislike her. It's fricked up. And sometimes I feel terrible for it. But she can be annoying and disgusting and unreasonable. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.